My goodness. You can really see how the wind sweeps through here. You sure can. Rich district. I mean, we're talking millions. So what's millions. it called? Mm, I forget. The yeah, district. Richmond. Was it the Presidio or something? Not. Yeah, this the whole thing is Presidio. Oh, okay. Okay, this, this is the first house I built, and the only one. So it's the only house I've ever owned. It was built on a lot that no one said could build on, because it was between two power lines, and there was only 16 feet where I could actually build. So no one built on it mm -hmm. until I came, and then I got the lot for very, very, hardly any money. But to make it look like it was deep, or a mm -hmm. bigger house, mm -hmm. as I set, like this is on the face and then this part right here is moved mm -hmm. back and I made the window exactly smaller so mm -hmm. it would look deeper than this yeah and then I set this back too I brought this so that Come uh, forward a bit yeah a little bit and so I went back and forth with these faces, and people would come up and say boy you have a big house yeah that's what look and, and, and say the size again uh, it's uh, 45 feet from here to here mm -hmm. and it's 16 feet wide uh-huh yeah so well, that's a trailer Amazing. house and so and and house. you and you have uh, the stairs going up on the right side yeah the stairs go up here uh -huh. and then you there's a landing and then you can walk over through here and mm -hmm. into the bedroom and that will continue go up to a little library I had up here with a little uh -huh. deck uh-huh and and how many windows did you say it there had? were no, seven, sky, sky, seven skylights seven skylights okay turn the picture around <laughs> <laughs> and so there we were seven windows the up on a, in the tower. There were seven. Wow. But before I knew about seven. Yeah, but sevens are following you. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this picture of my dad. He was nine. Right here, I'm sorry, right here. He's 19. He's already smoking. Um, and he's working on an airplane, making an airplane. Uh, and there, there are two engines. And this is an airplane that lands in the water. And so he made a model of it. Uh -huh. Here's another one, picture of it, on top yeah. of his his okay. mother and father's garage. Uh -huh. And he took it to the, the aircraft factory, and they they bought it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so then, during the Depression, he was making those little models uh, of Douglas aircraft that ended up in the Smithsonian. They're in the Smithsonian now. Uh-huh. Well, I learned everything from him. He was, the, yeah. he was a craftsman. I tried to make airplanes as good as he did for years and years and years and I couldn't do it. Uh -huh. I could uh -huh. not uh -huh. do it. Now I can. Now you can. Now, now I can you, now make anything as good as well, he did. In fact, but, you took uh, it further. Yes, he was so good. And I, also, I have a model airplane. I have a model. Who is this man? Yeah, so this is my dad. And he's making, he made this little airplane after Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic. Uh -huh. And he made it out of a post, a redwood post, on a, out of a fence post. Oh, yeah? And he was, he was completely fascinated with airplanes ever since that happened. And here he is, 30, 40 years later, standing by the Bear of St. Louis, which is Lindbergh's plane. There we go. So he had a destiny, too. He was in the aircraft industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, did, he was a part of the design of the first heart-lung machine ever developed. Oh, yeah. Um, and he did a lot of things in the, in the design field. He was very depressed because everything that he ever designed was taken by Douglas Aircraft, and he was left with nothing. Yeah, yeah uh, because they work, they have the contract to work, and everything that they right. do is they theirs. Have everything. Yeah, and of course they don't share it like you do. No, no, they, they don't. They no. sell everything. They yeah. sell everything. Yeah, yeah. So this man here is your grandfather. That's my grandfather. Here. He's from. Yeah. He's from Hungary. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your grandmother? My grandmother was uh, Hungarian also. Uh-huh. So, so I uh, have this Hungarian. So you've got that in the blood. Yeah, I have that in the blood. Yeah. And, and, and you said this is... Um, That's my dad and I when I was very small, making airplanes that were... Oh, yes. Not from an airplane kit. I had to buy the... Draw on myself, uh -huh. buy the wood, glue them together, you know, and of course my dad was there 
I got in trouble, he helped me. That's how I learned. Yeah. He taught me. So you need you needed an engineer as a father in order to... I did. And he know. was one heck of an engineer. There you go. And I needed him. And that's his one of his airplanes that he made up there in that cupboard. He uh -huh. made the prop. Every, he made all of this. This isn't from a kit. In other words, uh, cut out all the balsa wood and... Absolutely drew it up. Okay. He taught me how to draw. That's how I know how to draw. Well, because you see, of him. Yeah. yeah, because if you didn't know how to draw, you wouldn't have been able I, to. I can't do this work in the cupboards without drawing. Exactly, because you have all the documentation. Yeah, he taught me how to do that. You know, with the because you have to. I, I mean, otherwise nobody else can do it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And all in the living room. Oh, I have to, I remember a story my mother said. She said um, she met him, and then a week later they were married in Las Vegas. Wow. So what happened was that uh, she really liked him. She had been married before. And she said, I don't know what made me turn the corner. I didn't want to go and meet his parents. I didn't want to start a, start a relationship. But something made me out of Model A, and she said, I, something made me turn that corner. I wasn't ready to do it or anything. Something just made me turn there, and that was me. And it was me because I wanted those two together. Yeah. Because yeah. she had abilities that were fantastic, and this guy was the best around. So what was your mom like? So what? My mom? Yeah. Oh, my mom. So smart. She was a businesswoman. Uh-huh. And so she would uh, buy and trade houses, and eventually she got a huge hotel, and in La Laguna Beach, California, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, she ran that. Um, so she was really a smart lady. She was a nurse. Uh huh. Uh huh. So she, uh, you know, also had the relationship to the medical field. Uh huh. And all my my brothers died of heart problems. Uh -huh. I almost died of a heart problem. I had a heart murmur. Uh huh. So. And it's all connected. I mean, I, I know I chose this. This is the best. So is that, is that then connected to, because um, you said you went across the country, was that to do with the heart? Uh, uh, across the country to investigate what the organ was? No. No. Uh, was I had gotten, a, uh, my wife had um, three uh, miscarriages. Ah. And she was having trouble. Uh, we were both having trouble so with each other. So I had got, I went to the University of California in the bookstore and I found a book by Reich. Uh-huh, Wilhelm Reich. Yeah, and so I, uh, I bought the book. And uh, after reading it, that was it. I was, I, I, I was going to go to organ therapy because I felt that um, artists at my time were basically basing their art on dysfunctions that they had. Right. And yeah. I didn't yes. like that. I thought yes. art should be clean and clear and uh, without uh, 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 just some kind of problem that person had. Right exerted it into the arts. Right. No, oh, I didn't like that. I yeah. wanted it to be clean and crystal clear. That's what that's what Steiner says. Did he? he oh yeah, he says um, uh, art is coming out of a problem with the liver or the kidneys oh, see, or that I don't I don't want you, any part you, of that. You you can you can I mean it's it's in Steiner's work, you can read it in the medical lectures. Yeah. Well I went to Reich to to Oregon therapy to uh, make sure that I could there was nothing wrong with me and that I had to be forced there. I did it by choice. Exactly. I, and I wanted to go there to find out what I needed to do. So uh, he worked on the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he mm -hmm. worked on an energy that would flow. Of course, that's mm -hmm. the, the energy that I'm working with right now. Exactly. Exactly. And I wanted that to be free moving in my body. Mm -hmm. And I went to five years every week 
Wow. And I had to drive uh, two hours to get to Manhattan from wow. where I was living. Around what time was this? Was this after he passed or before? No, no, I went, oh no, he passed four years before I discovered a book. Okay. So I went to his, um, the man that um, they the, both lived on the same street in Forest right. Hills, and he was uh, his best student. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so you worked with him? And of course, Reich was... Um, was the Freud's best student? I don't know if you know that. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's publicly known. Oh, this guy, this this therapist was really good, and he didn't take any any BS. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knew exactly when you were just you know faking it, trying to get out of something. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. wow! It was very tough. What is schooling? It was a tough therapy. I mean, it wasn't just sitting on a couch or mm -hmm. lying on a couch. Mm -hmm. It was tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but anyway. I'm so glad I went through that. I went from when I was 25 to I was 30. Wow. And uh, spent all my money on that therapy. It was so expensive. I believe that. Oh, it was so expensive. And my wife went too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We both went. Uh-huh. And then you had children? Yeah, and then, my, then he taught me how to deliver a baby because I didn't want to go through all the stuff that was going on there yeah. in the, in the, in the world of having yes. babies. Yes, yes. So... Um, and uh, Wilhelm Reich was encouraging this type of birth. Yes. Where it was in a natural setting, there was no, no drugs, no gas, nothing. That's right. And uh, no sugar water. At, at, all that other, stuff. No yeah. acid in the eyes, no banking on the butt, no putting on cold st scales. Exactly. A whole, all the whole thing they do. Exactly. And again, the, the mother can't breastfeed for I don't know how many hours, and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. they cut the umbilical cord right away. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. all that was limited. My 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 children were nursing with the umbilical cord on. There you go. So That's you know, the, and well, it was completely crawled. dry. Yeah. Before that was cut. Yeah. You know, they, not, they 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 um. Uh, the babies have to crawl up to. I've seen that. They have that on 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 the internet. There's movies about it. Oh, they don't it. have to be taught how to do no, it. No, they crawl up and they do it. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So they're not quite. And you say. Uh, so how long would that take um, uh, to to dry up the umbilical cord? How long does how long does that actually take? Not before long. you before you cut it. Oh, it takes about um, forty five minutes. Yeah, so that's, that's... And you make sure that you milk it all, all the blood out of the placentia. Uh-huh. You know, you don't just cut it off and there's the baby's blood, you know, our mother's blood is uh -huh. is being cut off from the baby. It's, it's oh, okay. all drained out. You move, you, you move it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. You get good touch for that. Yeah, and I, all that went through my, you know, that's what part of what I didn't expect to be doing. No. <laughs> when, I, when I went there. <laughs> so you actually had, uh, uh, how many children did Three. you have? Three. And all delivered by you? Yeah, well, the and first one. The <laughs> first. Well, no, I always had someone around. Yes. In case there was a difficulty. I just didn't do it out in the trees. You know, no, no, no. no. no there no. was either a nurse or a doctor within walking distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to do it. Exactly. You know, my wife wanted me to do it. So. Exactly, yeah. But there was always backup. Always. There you go. Yeah, but just in case. And of course, just, never, just there never. Just in case. And there was never any problem. No, there never was any problem, and my wife didn't go through being gassed or put out by drugs or through all this horrible pain. It was all natural. So she had the experience of having the babies the way that it should be. She did. And uh, so many women are denied that. Well, not only that. Yes, that's true. But one of the things about this is. Um, the doctor taught me how to, when when she started to exert some armoring, mm -hmm. he taught me how to loosen her armoring during the time when, well, during the contractions and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, if she was tightening up in the shoulders, I could right. see that. If she was mm -hmm. tightening up in the pelvis, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, and, and her breathing, if she wasn't breathing right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. all those things. If she wasn't conscious and with her eyes, she had to keep her eyes very alert. Right. And not, not uh, what, what they called dulling out. Right. I didn't, she didn't, I didn't allow her to dull out. Yeah. It was those kind of things. Yeah. You know, it was not just uh, the baby coming out. No. It was working with my wife trying to work out any kind of armoring or uh, some kind of uh, inhibited. Exactly. Movement of some kind. So yeah, exactly. Kept those movements alive. 
So, yeah. yeah, but then in the meantime, I learned all about rice. I learned about making accumulators, making blankets, making shooters, making cloud busters. All of that experience I got directly from the man who was trained by Reich. Right. Big right. time. Yeah, right. And there was, a, you know, then all the doctors, a lot of the doctors split up. And so this man, his name was Chester M. Raphael. Um, I had to write books about other doctors like Dr. Baker, that he was plagiarizing Reich and distorting his his um, findings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's same thing, you know. With the, <laughs> there's always somebody who does that. Always somebody, and so um, then after that, uh, you know, I've always worked with with uh, the Orgone Energy, which is mm -hmm. what Reich called it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really it's the etheric, it's the astro, it's a yeah. solar wind, it's all of those prana, all of those things. Yeah. But the, what's really wonderful about Reich is he was able to measure it. He was uh, able to increase it. Mm -hmm. He was able to photograph it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was the first really to bring it into science, which right. is what I liked. I liked the science part of it. And of course, you know, being an artist, I was in, I was uh, teaching art in in mm -hmm. the New York school. Mm -hmm. But um, having that background of what I went through in therapy is the reason I'm where I'm now. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the big reasons I'm here doing what I'm doing. Yeah, and that's why, in other words, you had to incubate all the knowledge and wisdom that you soaked up there in order to bring it out after 60. Yeah, and not only that, but I didn't, ha I didn't wait till I was 60 before I started working on any kind of no. problems I had. No. I worked on them as soon as I found they were there, I started working on them. So yeah, yeah, they, yeah, so it's lifelong. Know, yeah, so I didn't want organ art. I didn't want to make organ art. No. I wasn't no. interested in that. No. So, so in the process I became a teacher and had to teach to make a living. Yeah. That's what happened. Which was fine. 30 years. So that's yeah. like yeah. From, from between 30 and 60 you have to do that. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. I learned all kinds of things that I needed to do this work. Yeah. Yeah. In the teaching. In the teaching. So. Well Frank, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. Here, here's a picture of a, a national championship women's team. Uh, mm -hmm. They were the best in the United States. And, wow. And they're from Hawaii. And um, You were in Hawaii for a while, as far as I understand. Uh, Twelve years. Twelve years in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, what did you do there? Teacher. Uh-huh. But Are there I had to teach auto mechanics. I had to, I had to teach... Uh, Plastics, wood shop, math, uh, um, metal shop, uh, welding, uh, auto shop, so forth. Mm -hmm. I had to teach everything. Very practical. I had to because yeah. there, was, there was only uh, only six hundred kids from kindergarten through high school. Uh huh. And this is the island okay. where I worked, and this is this is the school. Mm -hmm. And this is where everybody lived. This is one mile by a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. And this huge island, no one else lived anywhere. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And, and, and what island is this? Lanai. Lanai. Okay. Beautiful. So that's where I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of teaching. Oh, my goodness. Which really helped me in this work. It absolutely helped me in this work. Yeah, yeah. Here's my mother. Here. Wait a second while I get She's it. graduating from uh, a nurse because she became a, nur a, a registered nurse. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, she's 80 years old, right there. Uh huh. Went back to school mm -hmm. and became a nurse. I learned all kinds of things that I needed to do this work. Yeah, yeah. In the teaching. In the teaching. So. Well, Frank, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. 